everybody has a story to tell. And I remember a quote from uh, John Maxwell that said, my dad told me he never met anybody that he didn't love once he'd heard their story. We all have a story. And I believe that no matter whether you think somebody is a good person or a bad person, if you'll take time to listen to their story, you will know that uh, you can love them. Bingo was my dad's best friend. I remember Bingo, I think when I was probably three years old, he was my first boyfriend. He was so handsome and so wonderful. And then he got married on me. And I wouldn't speak to him for all three days because he got married. But you know, I was only three years old. Bingo would make you laugh. He never, he always said he never met a girl that he didn't think was gorgeous. Didn't matter if she was tall, short, fat, skinny, or what color she was. Every woman was gorgeous. He was an excellent pharmacist. He could diagnose just about anything that was going on and just made you feel welcome wherever you were. Bingo and his partner ran the drugstore in Carthage and they also had a sundry in there you could get the best ice cream scoop you ever had in the whole wide world. They would also make limeades and lemonades from scratch. Bingo Beringer was uh, uh, one of the nicest fellows I ever met. Had the greatest personality, greatest sense of humor. He could say things to people that I would have got slapped for, but he would always get away with it. Uh, but I remember when I moved here, uh, I had a, uh, a, a van of stuff to unload, and he came over and helped me unload it. And we unloaded it in the, uh, the uh, barn here beside the funeral home. And I uh, remember him carrying boxes of books up the stairs and uh, him saying to me, what's in this box? And I says, uh, well, bingo. I said, those are books that I have. He said, oh yeah, right. He says, what kind of books are they? And I says, they're good books. And he says, oh, I'm sure they are. <laughs> but I learned right then that bingo was a, uh, uh, had a good sense of humor, always was uh, quick to tell a joke and uh, it didn't matter if it was at his expense, and usually it was. But he and Tommy had a brother-to-brother um, -brother relationship. He was the town eulogist. Whenever somebody would die, he would go to the funeral and he would give the eulogy and he'd have everybody laughing and crying. But uh, he, he gave the, the best eulogies that uh, I think I ever heard anybody give. Um, and I remember the day that he passed away. Um, it was, he was out in his yard cutting grass, which he hated. He always told everybody he hated cutting grass but he died of a heart attack um, while he was cutting grass. And um, his wife always said, well, he, he, died, he died doing what he hated the most. <laughs> but um, I was the one that had to tell Tommy that uh, Bingo had passed away. And Tommy was, uh, he was in rehabilitation himself at that point after having a stroke. And I remember him just crying like a baby and it, it touched my heart so much because he always called him brother and they called each other brother. They were just, it, it was, it was uh, Bingo and Tommy were just best friends for as long as they were here. My name is Blanche Dowdy Carter, and that is me in 1972, when I was talking to Tommy Prickett about doing the funeral for my mom who had passed away. I was born here in Carthage and stayed in Carthage all of my life, attended Pinckney High School, and then after graduation from college, I came back to Moore County and taught in Southern Pines, and then I came to Santa's Farm Life and taught school there for 18 years before becoming principal at Pinehurst and then at Southern Pines. And after that, I served on the Moore County Board of Education. I do lots of volunteer work in the community here in Carthage and in Moore County, in my church and in my sorority and in the schools. Nate and Blanche Carter. Nate is a living legend here in Moore County as a track, track coach. I've known he and Blanche for quite some time. My mom taught with um, Blanche in Moore County schools. Carter was not born here, uh, and I call him Carter. He was not born in Carthage uh, or in North Carolina. He was born in Richmond, Virginia. And he went to college in North Carolina, and when he graduated, his first job brought him here to uh, Pinckney High School. And in fact, that's where I met him. No, he did not teach me. <laughs> he didn't teach me. He was there. Uh, 
uh, uh, teaching and I was there visiting a friend of mine who was teaching and that's how I met him. And now uh, the track at Union Pines is named for my husband who is featured right here, Nathaniel uh, Carter uh, track and field. He's won so many uh, <laughs> awards uh, for coach, coach of the Year for track and field for many, many years. And the wall is just full of uh, plaques that hang with his name on it right now with, uh, for coaching. And he still coaches. He coaches cross country and track and field at Union Pines and, and loves every minute of it. He does it because he enjoys it. He, uh, I think he has a lot to offer to the students but I think it also gives back to him. So I think it's a two-way thing. Being with them makes him feel good. It makes him young, makes him feel younger. Of course, he's exhausted when he gets home. <laughs> Tommy was always a sharp dresser, and I think anybody that knew him knew that. He took a lot of uh, pride in, in what he would wear and how he would look. They have a picture of him riding his farmall tractor from Riddle Equipment to his house one afternoon with his coat and tie on. Stand up straight, hands crossed in front of you or behind you, wherever you want them. But that was, and don't lock your knees. If you lock your knees during a one hour funeral, you're going to be on the floor. Very important from my dad's standpoint that you look professional and you, because if you don't look good, you may not be acting good. He always wanted to be uh, ready to to help somebody in need and always to be able to look professional. He would take me down to a men's clothing store in St. Paul's called Joe Sugars and we would shop for clothes down there. He would buy suits for everybody at the funeral home so we would all look alike, matching, matching suits and matching ties. But if he was going to look good, he wanted everybody else that worked with him to look good too. My dad was probably the kindest, I've already said, the most generous person you'll ever meet. When one of your loved ones died, he was very courteous, tried extremely hard to make sure that you were comfortable picking out what you needed for them. He can make you feel like that your loved one was in the best hands that they could possibly be in. Oh, it was neat. He was very, very nice. Uh, I had decided that I was not going to be my mom. I wanted to remember her the way she looked when I saw her last. And I went to the funeral home at the spur of the moment. I didn't even let my husband know I was going. I left from shopping or something and went straight there and told him that I had decided that I wanted to see my mom. And he said, would you like me to go in with you? And he did and went in with me and was very consoling. I'll never forget it. Very, 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 very consoling. Of course, I know Tommy from the community because he was very involved in doing funerals and things at my church. At uh, that time, when 1972, that Tommy Prickett's funeral home, Fry and Prickett, was the only one in Carthage that was not one uh, owned by a black person, but there is now. So, but a lot of people still go to Fry and Prickett for their uh, funeral services. My dad purchased the house in 1970. When he purchased it, I really questioned his sanity because it had not been painted in many decades. It had no paint whatsoever. It had a rusted tin roof, and I was really afraid it was haunted. But then I was a, a freshman in high school, so I had no clue. My sister, on the other hand, really thought it was haunted. Then my brother said he was worried about because he knew we'd be doing a lot of work because this was truly a family affair so far as remodeling the house goes. It was a lot of fun and a lot of work. Dad worked 18 hours a day working on the remodeling and if you ever get the chance to go over and see the current funeral home, it's absolutely gorgeous because he used a sandblaster to fix the walls and got all sorts of little idiosyncrasies around it. One of my dad's big deals was supporting the military. And if a military person was deceased and a person was escorting the body to Carthage and they had no place to stay, they had an apartment upstairs where that military person could stay. In uh, 1990, at the age of 22, uh, as a young funeral director, I received a phone call from Tommy Prickett one night. I remember I was watching uh, the 6 o'clock news with Peter this Jennings. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. And I answered the phone, and uh, it, he said, uh, Robert Nunnally. I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm Tommy Prickett. You don't know me, but I know you. And we have a mutual friend who told me that you're a funeral director and I need some help. He told me he lived in Carthage. I had no idea where Carthage was. He said, well, 
He said, if you'll come and visit me, he says, I'll show you around. He said, it's a beautiful little town. He said, Carthage has been good to me and I know it'll be good to you. He always came to serve. And whether we had services going on or not, he was always there ready to, to respond to whatever the needs were. Thank you.